Was any of the dialogue improv? Because I so believed that they were a couple and I thought it was great how so much of their life was revealed in these like little problems, you know, in terms of surviving in this car and then other things kind of worked their way into the conversation. Was any of this improv? Yes, a lot of it was improv. I mean, there was a script that Daly and I worked very hard on. Uh, and, you know, we approached this film, we approached it, and I, you know, when I talked to them, I said, look, I, there's three things I want to do to shoot this film. Um, one is I want to shoot in order. So that I want to shoot the whole movie, you know, from scene one to scene 70, whatever the last scene number was. Um, and, you know, chip away slowly at what it was. So the actors and I would, would walk in, you know, to a scene. We'd read it, we'd rehearse it, we'd block it. And, you know, uh, I would tell them, like, look, if, you, if, you know, something else comes out, let's just let it come out. Let's see what happens. And sometimes we would be kind of, you know, a, a portion through of the movie and, like, the feeling would be different. We'd be like, you know, after what we just did, I feel like, like, it shouldn't be this way. Like, maybe we can change it. And, you know, there was a lot of that happening. Um, there was a lot of improv. I, I, the story didn't necessarily change, but, like, the, you know, kind of the rawness or the realness and kind of, like, how, like, their performances kind of would come off as just, you know. I, I mean, I adore both of them and think that they really kind of poured everything out onto the screen. And... Uh, uh, but, you know, as far as, like, the script supervisor, I remember him coming up to me, you know, one or two times, like, well, they're not really saying the, the and I was like, it's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> Which is not always what you want, as a writer, it's not always what you want, but, like, you know, there were, you know, I, I feel like you have to let the actors make the, make the material feel good for them, you know? If it doesn't feel good in their mouth and doesn't, like, you know, feel perfect. I know there's a lot of directors and writer directors that, are, you know, will just stop and be like, no, start over. Like, that's not the word. I say the word this way. It's very purposeful. That's what it is. And I just felt like this wasn't that film. Uh, like, we had such an opportunity to kind of build from the bottom floor all the way to the top and, 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 and let everything happen so organically. Um, that, you know, I love allowing them to riff or add or, you know, take away. I mean, there's probably less words in it in the movie than there than there has been than there was in the script. Oh, that's interesting. Did you watch other films where it was one location just to kind of get a feel yeah. of how like tape or, you know, fi films like that where. Well, that, basically one what was the one you just mentioned? Tape? Oh, tape. Yeah. Is that uh, is that Richard Linklater or no? Sure. It's, uh, it's with Hawk. Uma Thurman and um, Ethan Hawke, and they're in one. They're in a hotel room. And it's oh. like, I think they're a couple. Oh. And they just argue back and forth, and it's it's great, and the tension um, escalates as well. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just kind of like this pressure cooker situation. I think that's one of the only ones I didn't watch. I watched like a lot of the survival kind of trap movies. I watched Bur Buried. I watched, you know, 127 Hours. I watched a lot of those. A drift, you know, I, I constantly was like watching uh, that kind of film uh, and, and really to see like, okay, what, what is working, what's not working, what, you know. I have a, I have a not necessarily, I don't know if it's a, a good quality or a bad quality. Uh, if I see something that somebody's done, I don't want to do that. Like I'm always like, okay, well that's been done, so I don't want to do that. But at the same time, you get into this like, well, there's a reason why certain tropes work. <laughs> like, like there's a there's a reason why like everybody does this <laughs> because, you know, it works. And you know, uh, I keep trying to tell myself like, okay, some of this stuff I should probably not just throw away because I don't want to like copy or repeat somebody else. But um, my my partner, my business partner hates 
you know, when I say, oh, well, I just, he, he'll, he'll sometimes like not show me. He'll be like, don't watch this, don't watch this movie because, <laughs> because I, don't, I don't want you to not do this <laughs> like, because this is great. Just do, just do whatever you, you know, it's kind of like what you've been saying. So. Um, and for the interior shots, what was the, how many hours a day were you doing a lot of these scenes? And did that help lend to some of the stress uh, because it was so believable between the two actors? Well, I, you know, when, on your last question, I didn't, uh, I didn't give you the other two things we did. So the, the one thing I asked them to do was, I want to shoot the whole thing in order so that we can build. We took two cars and, you know, if we're in a scene and you know, somebody got mad and they broke something, we're like, okay, great, that's broken. Now we move forward, it's always broken. We'll go with the other car and just break it on that card. So it's always, you know, like we just couldn't, oh, we never went backwards. Um, second was I went, wanted to shoot the whole thing in a freezer. So uh, they, we could see their breath and so that they could be cold, which, you know, the actors, when I first you know, mentioned that to them, they were like, oh, that would be so amazing. They were like, you know how hard it is to act cold? Like, it just takes so much energy to act cold. And I was like, that won't be a problem. Uh, the third was I wanted them to diet. And I wanted to, I wanted to shoot three to four days a week. So usually on a film, especially an indie film, it's five to six days a week. Um, I... You know, my dream was to shoot three to four days a week so that his facial hair would, would grow and their, the time that they spent in that car would reach, like, by the end, by the first day of shooting to the last day of shooting, it had been 24 days. You know, we had shot, we shot 13 days, but over the span of kind of 24 days, and they lost 15 to 20 pounds, and, you know, his beard grew in, because, I mean, we're a small movie. I hate the way fake beards look. And it was just one of these things, like, keep it just natural and keep it, you know, like, just stay in this moment and feel the hunger. And, you know, they didn't do anything unsafe as far as their diet. But uh, it was just, you know, just to, see, just to feel the difference and to see that you, you look from the very first shot of the movie to, like, the you know, right before... Genesis gets out of that car, her face is completely different. Um, so that was my, uh, that was my, so to, to go back to, I'm trying to piece back to the question you asked, but like the hours we spent in the car is kind of just doubled by the, by shooting in a freezer at 20 degrees. You know, the, the, you know, the first time that they walked into that freezer, they go, this is it's pretty cold. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like, it's cold. <laughs> but it's great that they, that they were excited by that. And you're right. You know, I did notice that there were physical changes in them, and I couldn't put my finger on it. I did say, you know, the beard, and, and she continued to kind of like have a dirtier face. But physically, I noticed that they, they did change. I couldn't totally see why, but I felt that it was the stress or whatever it was. So that's great. I hadn't even thought it was a full like you know that now that you're saying that it, it, it registers how much of the story did you know right away and how much did you did you work on to flesh out so you see the script is there on ink tip you you decide to option it did it change in your mind of how the ending would be or different parts different little elements of their life um you know, the story when it was for, when I first got it, it was very tense and it was very grabbing and it was very like, okay, I understand. Like, these are the two people were in this car uh, and they got to figure out how to stay alive or what to do. And like, I was like, okay, I totally get it. And then one, you know, one of the main things that I wanted to kind of put in there always was like, okay, well, what is the relationship between these two people and what is the stress? And, you know, I don't want to take away, I'm not, I don't want to say that Daly didn't have a lot of that, of that there, but there was just little things that I thought we could add um, to kind of make their relationship a little realer. Um, 
and there were moments, um, you know, the moments that I thought, like, these are very authentic moments, like the candle, uh, like, uh, you know, I'm, I, I have, a, the only way for me to explain is, like, there's, I have a spoiler that I'm going to say, uh, and I don't know, you know, I probably shouldn't say it out, uh, the placenta. You know, nobody ever gives birth in a movie with, uh, you know, usually you give birth in a movie and it's like, here's the baby. <laughs> and it's done. <laughs> and, you know, we had, a, we, we, we took a, out a bit of cord cutting and there's a placenta, you know, the placenta that's being birthed and like, yeah, none of that ever comes across in a film. It's usually just, oh, the baby's born and then that's, that's how babies are born. Um, so, you know, there was it, authentic moments like that was something that I really wanted to kind of keep in and make real and organic. Like, there's a bottle of water that was always in the, in the script. And I remember, like, halfway through it where I just keep going past this bottle of water, past this bottle of water, and I was like, the bottle of water is not frozen. Why, how would the bottle of water not be frozen? And they were like, everybody was like, oh, yeah. I was like, how would you... How would you keep a bottle of water warm so enough so that it doesn't like freeze? <laughs> like you're in a frozen car, like you know it's going to you know. And they're like, oh my gosh, we've all been reading the script and they've been passing water back and forth. Yeah, how do they keep it warm? And I was just you know, he put the bottle of water inside of his chest to like <laughs> you know keep it warm. Um, uh, you know, it was just little things like that that I was just kind of very fixated on making it feel real and authentic and organic, you know? Right, and I thought it was great in that here they are trapped in this situation. They don't know what the outcome will be. But then there's little reveals about their life, their life that you can tell they feel almost like, what well, you know, so they can't escape the arguments that they're having and these little things that are revealing things about their relationship. Um, and they're kind of stuck there to deal with it. And I just thought that was a really interesting part aside from all the other sort of terrifying things that it wasn't like they could go slam the door and go in another room. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't run away. You can't run away from uh, the problem that's right there in front of you. You know, it's funny. I, I, I was, you know, I, I, I always said it's like taking a, a relationship and like putting it in a pressure cooker, like just like just keep it in there until everything kind of boils out. And I found that every analogy was like always about like pressure cooker or an incubator. And I was like, what's the opposite of pressure, like an incubator? And they were like, it's, it is a freezer. <laughs> like a freezer is the opposite. <laughs> like, but, but to put people, you know, put a, a relationship that obviously, I mean, that, I don't even think it's obvious, you know. I think this is a, you know, what I always wanted with this couple um, is that they're, they're any, anybody. Um, and that might also be something that I did, that I tried to uh, kind of adjust in the uh, writing process. Because I think maybe the first draft, uh, the character of Matt was kind of a, a boy scout or had this knowledge of things uh you know from from being a boy scout and you know to me i thought that was a little less interesting uh you know anybody can pull over during a snowstorm and say let's just rest this out until it until it passes and how does just kind of you know the average person somebody who doesn't have like the wilderness experience, somebody who's not the mountaineer like climbing and, and uh, you know, gets stuck. You know, someone who's not like, who's out of their element is not, this isn't like their world that they're always, they're not the surfer stuck in the rock. They're not the astronaut stuck in space. They're not, you know, this isn't like where they kind of live their their life, you know, just to be kind of, you know, to not be equipped with tools and, and how to kind of, you know, an average couple kind of common sense or figure their way out of a, you know, a situation. And then, and at the same time, blame or, or, or 
or like why we're here because you did this and you know point fingers because you know six days later you're like well I told you we shouldn't have done this you know I mean and I think it's very relatable as we've watched kind of couples watch this movie um, that you kind of pick a side or pick a stance on what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing and what, what one person didn't do enough of and whose fault it was that they're there. Um, and, and I always found that very interesting with this film.